Yes, now I've been talking about the, the sort of virtues and the elegance of Einstein's theory. I should mention um, one of the great puzzles which the theory has um, thrown up. And this is, well, it is actually a puzzle which has been there already previously uh, for centuries, namely the origin of the universe. But the thing is that this particular problem of the origin of the universe and of the final state of the universe is something where one can begin to uh, ask sort of well-defined questions. The thing is that general relativity, Einstein's theory of gravitation, does make some clear predictions as to the existence of what are called singularities or singular states in the universe. Now, one such singularity is what would arise in the sort of origin of the universe, the Big Bang, the initial... And when you have this picture of a, of a universe beginning with a bang, so you ask what happened before, yes. <laughs> before the bang or at the bang, mm. and you just have to say, well, our laws of physics don't hold. Well, well one thing is you would say before, and the word before mm. involves the concept of time. Yes. So once the idea of, of, of time has ceased to have a me meaning yes. as, it, as it does, well, time is certainly rather different, absolutely. Mm. I haven't quite come to your point about black holes. Yeah. I, should, I, okay. should, uh, I was talking about the initial Big yeah. Bang. I was mentioning that because that is a, a similar situation mm. to what now appears to arise in the situation of gravitational collapse, mm. which I believe you, you say Professor Wheeler mentioned. Um, the thing is that we have not only this, this, this uh, question, we don't know what happened at the beginning of the universe, but there are... You can say we also don't know what happens at the end of the universe. But the thing is that you can have local situations where you don't want know what happens at the end of those local situations. You don't have to ask the question about the whole universe. Mm. And this arises in, in perfectly uh, understood physical situations where you have st stars. It, 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 work, it, it arises from the uh, stellar theory. You consider the history of a star. Imagine the history of the sun, for example, which is an ordinary kind of star. Well, uh, according to the accepted theory, which seems to be very good, both uh, observationally and uh, theoretically, that the sun will uh, gradually, and after it burns, I don't know, about 10 to the 6th or 10 to the 7th years at its present sort of level, it will then expand and become what's known as a red giant. It will come out to the Earth's orbit, that sort of size. It'll just be that, about that big. And then it'll collapse back down again to what's known as a white dwarf. And the sun, being the size it is, can survive as a white dwarf. A white dwarf is a, a star of about the size of the Earth or so. That's general order. Now stars which are bigger than the sun, more massive than the sun, cannot end up as a white dwarf. What happens is, is that they would collapse down even further. Now, there are more condensed states possible. Uh, there's a thing called a neutron star, which is even more uh, condensed than a white dwarf. It's something like 10 kilometers across. Um, it can be perhaps a bit more massive than a white dwarf. It's not very clear. Uh, neutron stars are observed now to exist in, as the cause of pulsars. But then the further question is, what happens to stars which are bigger than that? I mean, a, a star of, say, three or four or five times the mass of the sun, and stars are observed of up to 50 times or so the mass of the sun. The question is, what happens to them when they um, finally die, they burn out, or use up all their nuclear fuel, and collapse down? And it turns out that there's no configuration which will support the gravitational attraction of a, of a cold body that sort of mass. And what will happen, according to the theory, is that it simply collapses right down uh, until it gets, first of all, it gets to a point at which the escape velocity from the surface will exceed the speed of light. So that no information can escape from the body and it would appear to be dark from outside. But when it gets to that state, it can't stop. And so it has to collapse even further. And the body will just go on shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and it doesn't seem to be anything that could stop it. On the other hand, you do get this region where the light velocity is equal to the escape velocity and this is what's known as a black hole. 
Anything which goes inside this region is sucked inwards. Since the, the speed of light is, according to special relativity, the local maximum speed, nothing can exceed that local speed. If the speed of light is not sufficient to escape, mm. then nothing can escape. And so this is what happens. You get this, this region for a mass of, uh, say, ten times the mass of the sun, I think it would be something like 40 miles, if my memory is correct. But it's still, as you were falling into this, you'd still fall freely and initially. You'd fall freely into it. Just as a man in an elevator. That's right. That's right. It would be the tidal force. The tidal it? force, in fact, would be very large for mm. such a body, but uh, well, it depends on how big the mass is. I think, in fact, you had a, a calculation where you brought a large number of stars together and in the region of the solar system and showed that initially it wouldn't uh, be such a catastrophic event to be that inside a black a, hole. That was a purely thought experiment. Yes. The, yes, the, the evidence, the evidence is, is very favor. strongly, the theoretical evidence yes. is very strongly in yes. favor of black holes. And if you accept general relativity, then there must be black holes. Is well, that, even there, true? I suppose, they're either black yeah. holes or worse. Oh, I see, yes. <laughs> there must be either black yes. holes or worse. Yes. But there are ways of observing these. Yes, yes, there are. Well, there are a number of candidates. Yes, well, you don't observe anything coming from the black hole. What you observe is the, well, first of all, the gravitational field of that black hole on another object. You see, it still does have a static gravitational field, which, if you like, is the field left over from the body, made by the body which collapsed mm -hmm. to make it. And that field is sort of stuck to the black hole and, yeah. and can't escape. The evidence is also substantiated in that um, material is continually being sucked into this hole. Material from the other star, which yes. is sort of just a small amount of it, which is spirals its way into the... Yes, and as it goes in, it does emit some radiation. That's right. The, yeah. the, you see, the black hole is very small. You have to think yeah. of water going through yeah. a, a bath plug yeah. hole, which is a tiny yeah. little, little hole, you see. And, and uh, as it gets funneled in, the material gets very, very compressed yeah. and very hot and produces x-rays, and these x-rays are observed. That was in relation to extracting energy from black holes, yeah. and uh, there are other ways of doing it which don't require the, the strings. So. Yeah.